During this section, what we're going to be talking about is a historical perspective on fecal microbiota transplantation and the technique that is still currently being used, albeit less frequently, given the effectiveness of this technique paving the way for pharmaceutical companies to create cleaner products, safer products that are currently in phase two and phase three trials. However, many of us currently still employ these techniques due to their efficacy and availability, as well as the criteria for patients to be enrolled in phase two and phase three clinical trials. If a patient isn't able to be enrolled in a phase two or phase three clinical trial and they have no other option, this is a very viable option. So how do we identify donors to donate stool for fecal microbiota transplantation. And it is done by initially going through a history with the donors, and the donors are identified either as being friends or relatives of the individual in need of a transplant, or occasionally a stranger who is willing to donate. Through the medical history, a number of questions are asked of disease states that are believed to be transcribed through the microbiota, including things like rheumatologic disease, cardiovascular disease, as well as irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, among other things. In addition, the donors are asked with regards to antimicrobial exposure within the previous three months, which is an exclusionary criteria. If they pass through that initial screen, then they are taken through a universal blood donor questionnaire. That universal blood donor questionnaire is used as a, also a general screen for the health and the risks associated with that individual potential donor. Once they pass through that, they will then have blood work and stool studies. The blood work assesses for hepatitis A, B, C, HIV, and syphilis, with the stool studies checking for C. difficile, stool culture, ovum parasite, as well as Giardia, Cryptosporidia, Isospora, and Cyclospora. If the individual passes all of those tests, they will then have the privilege of presenting to the endoscopy suite the day of the procedure. When they present to the endoscopy suite, they are given a couple of Dulcolax to help them have a bowel movement. Once they have a bowel movement, the specimen is stored typically at room temperature and then brought into the endoscopy suite room. At that point, the specimen, or 100 grams of the specimen, is mixed in a blender with about 500 milliliters of normal saline. It is blenderized malt for about five minutes and then sieved through a polyp retrieval kit. We are sieving off the fibrous matter that is present within the stool. Once that fibrous matter is removed, about five or six 60 cc syringes are drawn up of the effluent containing mostly the bacteria as well as the other mic micro microscopic contents of the feces. Following this, a colonoscopy is performed. The colonoscopy is performed with passage of the scope to the end of the colon and into the terminal ileum. Within the terminal ileum, 60 milliliters of the effluent is released. In the cecum, about 60 or 120 centimeters, milliliters of the effluent is released. 60 milliliters is released into the ascending colon, 120 milliliters into the transverse colon. Prior to the procedure, Imodium is given. Following this fecal microbiota transplantation, a patient receives a call 24 hours after, 72 hours after, one week after to make sure that they're feeling well, and then finally, about 30 days after, they will present for a follow-up. In practice, we follow these patients for about three months to assure that they do not have a recurrence. In the event of a recurrence, the patient has another fecal transplant using typically the same donor, and that will enhance the efficacy of the transplant even further, typically getting us to that approximate 92% ability to wipe out C. difficile in a sustained manner. So as we can see, this methodology is a rudimentary methodology, but something that has worked quite well, and as I stated before, has paved the way for the pharmaceutical companies to develop products, including capsules and enemas, that will allow us to use cleaner and safer products moving forward with much more sustained effects and much more hardy data to back up our ability to treat this infection.